For many people, weekends are for sleeping in. For Porsche owners, it's worth waking up early to take on empty roads with gusto. The latest way to do that is the 718 Cayman GTS, or if you want the wind in your hair, go with the Boxster drop top. Either way, they turn asphalt into Disneyland. GTS is kind of the value proposition of the Porsche lineup in both 718 and 911 models. Basically, it adds a bunch of extra kit standard that people would buy anyways, and then offers that up at a substantial discount. Near as I can tell, you'd save some $4,000 over a comparably equipped S model if the gear was even available. Porsche has invited myself and a number of other automotive journalists to California's Napa Valley to show off the changes. Checking the GTS box automatically gets you the Sport Chrono Package, Porsche Active Suspension Management, Sport Exhaust for a little extra growl when wanted, and excellent upgraded sport seats. Outside, this, 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 and these get the black treatment. Plus, there are unique fascia treatments front and rear. Carbon ceramic brakes are available if you have $7,400 to spare. A more aggressive suspension that lowers the car another 10 millimeters goes for $290, though think twice if you have a steep driveway. The 718, of course, a mid-engine car, while the 911 has it in the rear. The 2.5 liter flat four-cylinder that is turbocharged makes 365 horsepower and up to 317 pound-feet of torque. Would love to show it to you, but I don't have my toolkit with me out here. GTS has 15 extra horsepower, something money won't buy in other 718 models. The standard gearbox is a six-speed manual. Going with the seven-speed dual-clutch PDK also buys the sport response button with 20 seconds of extra turbo boost and paddle shifters, uh, no surprise there. Okay, time to see what she can do. With PDK in launch control, Porsche says that the zero to 60 time is 3.9 seconds, and I think they're being conservative. As for cabin noise, my apologies for the audio. An accidental reset on my mic makes this car seem much louder than it is. It's appropriately quiet or loud for a touring sports car. Full disclosure, the Cayman has always been a favorite of mine, and on roads like this, I'm thinking a couple things. First, it's simply breathtaking in the corners with its mid-engine rear drive dynamic, like your own space mountain wherever you drive. And secondly, how can I possibly make more money to buy one? There's brake torque vectoring and electronic stability control, but the technology never makes itself overtly felt. It'll just convince you that you're a better driver than you really are. One of the biggest complaints of the 718 is that its turbo four engine doesn't have that distinctive sound that the outgoing six cylinder had. This one sounds a lot better. It has different intakes and a larger turbo. And the Turbo 4 has a torque curve that comes on early in the rev range and maintains a flat nature through the power band, making throttle response easy to manage. Porsche says the U.S. is the biggest market for manual transmissions, and the one in the 718 is awfully good. But gotta say, I personally prefer the PDK in this car. It's telepathic. It just always knows what gear to be in. And it sounds great, too. Snick, snick, snick. There's active aero happening. Uh, this pops up at 75 miles an hour to increase downforce. It can be manually lowered in case you think law enforcement will use that knowledge against you. Okay, I have hit some rough pavements. If you couldn't tell, Cayman is relatively comfortable. As comfortable as a sports car is going to be. Cayman GTS won't ding you in fuel consumption too badly. The EPA rates its drinking rate at 20 city, 29 highway, and 23 combined, albeit on specified premium grade gasoline. And most likely, it's thirstier hustled through the countryside like this. 
A couple notes about the intimate interior. The biggest change when upgrading to the GTS level is a lot more standard Alcantara, including the headliner, which is a $1,200 option on lesser 718s. Like all Boxsters and Caymans, there's a premium vibe to the cabin that's all about the business of driving. Satisfaction greets your fingers every time they slip into the hefty door releases. And let's not forget, the most over-engineered cup holders in the automotive world live here, though wouldn't want a corner hard with hot coffee in them. Porsche's touchscreen interface is easy to navigate once you're used to it. Apple CarPlay is available for $360. No, I will not be doing the Costco TP test because I'm at least 100 miles away from one. You could get a good sized suitcase back here, but wait, there's more. Remember, the Cayman and the Boxster have a frunk. So really, this car would be good for touring. So, what's all this going to cost? Well, prices start at $81,750 for the Cayman GTS. It's two grand more and the elimination of the rear storage for the Boxster. The top needs to go somewhere. As tested with the PDK, the Cayman I drove retails for $88,900. This is not inexpensive, but neither is a trip to Disneyland. It's another reason why the 718 GTS might be considered a bargain of sorts. Point it towards any curvy road early on a Sunday morning, and it just might be the happiest place on earth. Back to transmissions. There are people who love manual gearboxes. I get it. Some cars, like the Mazda MX-5 Miata, shouldn't be sold without them. It transforms that car. But anyone buying a Porsche should at least test drive the dual-clutch PDK. It's magnificent technology you have to experience to appreciate. I had the privilege of talking with legendary endurance driver Hurley Haywood over breakfast, and he gushed about it. It's his choice, so don't cheat yourself, test drive it. At the Porsche program, we were also able to drive the new 911 Carrera T. T stands for touring, and it's the lightest 911 you can buy. To lose weight, this model gets thinner side glass and less sound deadening material, plus the interior door releases are webbing straps, not the lovely metal ones found on most Porsches. Its turbocharged 3.0-liter flat six makes 370 horsepower and 331 pound-feet of torque low in the rev range. It does 0 to 60 in as fast as 4 seconds, according to Porsche. I'm using handout video since I didn't have time to shoot my own. As I said, the Cayman has always spoken to me, and I enjoyed pounding through Northern California with it in the morning. But I have to admit, I wasn't in the 911T for three minutes after lunch when I found myself questioning my own choice. So basically what I'm saying is, at a starting price of $103,000, if I ever end up buying the Porsche I want, I'm going to have to save up even more money now. Dang. That's driven. I'm Tom Volk.